All right, good afternoon and welcome to Connecting Point, uh, an online devotional and Bible study designed to just provoke your thoughts and to give you something to think about through the week. Uh, it's Wednesday and we like to do it on Wednesday just simply uh, because it's hump day, it's the middle of the week and uh, Sunday's coming, but Sunday's not quite here yet. My name is Travis Jones and I'm the Minister of Spiritual Formation at Hillside UMC and it is my honor to be with you today. Uh, today is our last Connecting Point of the month of February and we're going to be continuing our series on spiritual warfare. Um, and we started off uh, our last connecting point with that, uh, talking a little, a little bit about how people are not the enemy, right? And uh, the enemy is the enemy, how Jesus says there's no neutral ground uh, involved in that. There's no neutral ground in spiritual warfare. He says you're either with it or against it. And, and in, in cases where you're against him, you're actually making things more difficult. You're, you're making things harder, right? You're, you're causing confusion and things like that. So that was kind of a quick recap of where we where we landed. And today we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. And we're also going to talk about the kingdom of darkness and the influences uh, that we allow into our lives that will advance one kingdom or the other. Now, before we get there, uh, I want to kind of read you some, some scripture, um, specifically out of the book of Matthew. And I had planned to read a, a lot more scripture with this, talking about John and, and whatnot. But I think I want to just land on one particular verse. It's toward the end of Matthew 4. Uh, I think it's verse uh, right around 16, 17, 4, 16, 17. And I am using the message translation, which is why it's kind of always nebulous, the actual address of the verse. But now I kind of want to land there and read that and, and kind of talk through that a little bit. So let's let's go ahead and start off with that verse. We're in Matthew 4, and I think we're around 16, 17. Uh, with that, so let's go ahead and start. It says this. It says, The Isaiah prophesied revelation came to life in Galilee the moment Jesus started preaching. He picked up where John left off. He said, change your life. God's kingdom is here. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. Now, I, I picked that particular verse to talk about because when he says God's kingdom is here, that indicates that there is a kingdom of God. Right? It's not a nebulous thing. God's kingdom is here. Now, if there is a kingdom of God, a kingdom of heaven, then there's also a kingdom of darkness, a worldly kingdom that's at play as well. So if one exists, the other one has to exist logically. With that, and it is expressed so uh, in Scripture. Uh, so Jesus is saying this. Now, to give you a little bit of background information before we get too far into this, it says he picked up where John left off. Now, John had uh, John and Jesus were cousins. Uh, you can read in Scripture where you know uh, Mary meets Elizabeth, John's mom, and John leaps inside uh, of Elizabeth. He's not even born yet, but realizes Jesus is close. John baptizes Jesus. Um, John was saying, "Repent." For the kingdom of heaven is it here? Repent. Um, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was saying things like that. Um, and then John meddled a little bit uh, and made somebody mad that was in leadership or in authority. And it turns out that John meddled so much that it got it. It cost him his head. Right? Uh, he's, he's, he was killed. Um, uh, he was arrested before that. But Scripture says that Jesus picked up where John left off. Right? So here you have John setting the way for Jesus and Jesus picking up where John left off and saying, change your life. God's kingdom is at hand. Now, depending on your, your actual translation you're using, sometimes it's going to say repent right, uh, or change your life. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, I chose change your life. God's kingdom is here because of the everyday language that it put it out there. But let's look at the, the translations that, that use repent, right? It'll say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And repent literally means to turn and go a different direction. Uh, but the word repent, if you were to look in, in the Greek, the metanoia, right? Uh, metanoia, depending on uh, the translations you look at, it actually means to, to turn or think different afterwards, right? Which indicates that there's something that happens that causes you to think or turn or go away. So if we insert that into this verse, the change your life, it's change your life afterwards. Think different afterwards afterwards. Think different afterwards because God's kingdom is here. So that means that God interrupts us and it, his interruption, his revelation is so profound that it causes us to be different after the fact. So so that's that, that part of the verse there. Think different or change your ways, change your life afterwards. Now, it's important that we know that, that it takes God's interaction in this to actually change our lives because I don't know about you, but if you've ever tried to change your life, it's a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult thing to do because it requires intervention, right? To literally have some to, to life-changing moment, um, it requires an outside intervention for the most part. You can will yourself into being different in some cases, but just like dieting or anything else, when you go to make a change like that, sometimes you, you try to make that change and you wind up actually 
going in reverse and actually gaining weight or something like that with the diet because you didn't have that outside intervention to cause uh, that change to happen. So God is the outside intervention where he says, change your life. God's kingdom is here. So with that said, let's look at the two kingdom concept. You have the kingdom of heaven and you have the kingdom of darkness. Now, both are present in any given moment. And as a matter of fact, up until the moment where Jesus says the kingdom, the God's kingdom is here, the kingdom of darkness was the prevalent um, occupier of this space. And it would say things in scripture like uh, earlier on in this Matthew verse, it talks about the people saw a great light. Well, Jesus is walking in a dark land. He's the light, right? He's the beacon of hope walking through this, this area that has been dominated by the kingdom of of darkness. Now, at any given point, these kingdoms are present. And at any given point in your day, your life, uh, your morning, perhaps, uh, you're in agreement with one of these two kingdoms. And the agreements are subtle. The influences you allow into your life dictate the agreement you have with one kingdom or the other. So let me give you an example. Uh, Say you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off. And uh, you've already had a rough morning and it just slips out of you. You start using profanity and you start yelling and all these things like that. Well, when I ask the question, which kingdom are you in agreement with right then and there? The answer will be simple. You're in agreement with the kingdom of darkness because what's coming out of your mouth and your actions aren't generating the things of the spirit, the kingdom of heaven, like love and joy and peace and those type of things. But sometimes the examples aren't so simple. Oftentimes, uh, my son will, will get, he'll get into an argument with me about something uh, because, you know, as a adolescent boy, he knows better than his dad. Uh, not that that has ever been true of anybody else in the history of mankind uh, or us with God that we tend to try to think we know better than him. But he'll get into these arguments with me and then he'll start yelling and getting angry and things like that. And, and it causes the environment to shift around him. And I will stop him and I'm at, I will ask him, which kingdom are you in agreement with right now? And he'll get quiet. He doesn't like that question because when I ask that question, his thoughts start running the direction that the question provokes. Which kingdom are you in agreement with right now? Are you in agreement with the kingdom that produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness? I mean, are you in agreement with that kingdom? Are you in agreement with the kingdom that produces anger, anxiety, fear, hatred, um, violence? Are you, which kingdom are you in agreement? And that puts a stop usually to the action because he goes, Woo, I don't want to be in agreement with the kingdom of darkness. And I would venture to say that most of us don't want to be in, in agreement with that kingdom. But the choices are, are so subtle sometimes. It reminds me of the cartoon. Um, my, my daughter now is one, and she likes to watch the old Saturday morning cartoons. It comes on a channel at like 7.30, and she likes to sit there and watch the Bugs Bunny and all that stuff that's on there. And there's always these cartoons that have the, uh, the guy who's being influenced by, he's got the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other, and, and they're both trying to get him to make a decision. It reminds me a little bit like that, the two kingdoms being present. Um, it, it's interesting that, that the kingdom of darkness typically only... Uh, only responds to you in in areas you're the weakest, right? Um, if you've had an issue with something particular, then the kingdom of darkness knows that weak spot and goes out. Because why why would an enemy go after your strong point? They attack your vulnerabilities, right? So at any given moment, you have these options set before you. The Bible says you have the option of life or death set before you, right? The kingdom of heaven, this life giving kingdom that was present at the beginning when uh, the the ruha the the Holy Spirit hovered over the surface of the deep, or you have this kingdom of darkness and death uh, and emptiness that's present. And it can look pretty from time to time. And you can come into agreement with it without even knowing because it looks so pretty. But when you see the fruit that that kingdom produces, it's obvious in that moment which kingdom you're in agreement with. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to ask, um, if I'm unsure, to ask God, say, which kingdom am I in agreement with right now? Because when I ask, he'll tell me. And typically, if I have to ask, I already know which kingdom I'm in agreement with. Now, when it comes to spiritual warfare, when it comes to fighting, it may seem like you're in between these two kingdoms, right? It may seem like you are um, just in the middle of a fight that's been going on, but, but that's not actually true. Because whatever kingdom you're in agreement with, you carry with you, and you advance that particular kingdom. So here's a good way to a good way to think about this. Have you ever walked into a room 
and felt the tension in the room, felt an angriness in the room that wasn't there, or an awkwardness, or just a, a fearfulness that was there. And I, I guarantee you, you have. You've walked into a room full of people, and someone in the room has been angry, and you felt that anger. You felt that that fear that's there. That that. So what you're feeling there is a particular kingdom that has dominion now in that space, right? You're feeling that in that room. Now, as a believer. If we're in agreement with the kingdom of heaven, when we walk into that same room and we carry with us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all those things, all those fruits of the Spirit, we press against that kingdom of darkness. And hopefully our relationship is as such that the things that we carry with us actually advance and push out those things that are there. I think a lot of times uh, when it comes to us as believers, when we get engaged in the fight, um, we do so unknowingly, or we lose confidence in the fact that we're a part of the fight, and we walk into one of those moments where there's fear, anger, hostility, and those type of things, and we go, we bow out because we don't, for some odd reason, we think the God that's in us is not more powerful than the gods that are running the show over here, right? But the the, the thing to know is our God is the God, and these others are false with that. So when it comes to spiritual warfare and engaging in that fight, we have to actively engage in it. We have to actively know that we are carrying the presence of the Most High God and that wherever we set foot, that ground is His. We take it for Him. Where there's a beachhead for the enemy, we establish a beachhead for God. Where there, where the enemy has had control, much like Jesus when we step into, because we carry Jesus with us, when we step into those moments, we're a beacon of light in those moments, a beacon of hope in those moments. And when people look at us in those moments, they should see those things. But too often, we as believers, again, we bow out of those situations because they're uncomfortable, right? We don't want to be confrontational or we don't know how to be confrontational in the right way. We tend to be confrontational in a way that hurts other people. And remember, people are not the enemy. Like I said in the former connecting point, people are not the enemy. The enemy is the enemy. And if we treat the battle as spiritual and not physical, then that's when we do things the right way. When we step into those moments, knowing that we have spiritual authority in those moments and we carry the presence of the Most High God into any given situation, that's when the kingdom of heaven is advanced. That's when people see the kingdom of heaven advancing. That's when God interrupts people's lives. That's when people go, wow, I need to repent because the kingdom is here. And when Jesus says the kingdom is here, when he said the kingdom is at hand, he's literally saying, if you reach out, it's right here. And for us as believers, and I say this with the utmost sincerity, we need to realize that the kingdom of heaven is present right here. It's present in every one of our interactions. And if we will just reach out with openness in our heart, we can take hold of the kingdom. And in every one of our interactions with both believers and non-believers and each other and just everything, we can advance the kingdom of heaven. I refer to um, a lot of times spiritual warfare is is like playing in the Super Bowl, right? The only difference is we're playing in the Super Bowl and we've ar- we're already wearing the ring because we've already won. The battle, the war is over. We get to participate in the battle, but we're wearing the rings uh, showing that we've already won and the enemy knows this. So with all that said, I just wanted to bring a little light to that, a little, little, little light to the thought that at any given moment, uh, we're in agreement with one kingdom or the other. And so as you go about the rest of your week, ask that question. In your interactions, which kingdom am I advancing right now? Who am I helping? Am I making things worse? Am I helping the cause? Is Jesus being made more famous in my interaction? Or are people having a bad taste in their mouth because of me and my interactions? with regard to Jesus. So just a question, just some thought-provoking things. So with all that said, uh, this has been Connecting Point. Have a blessed week.